Hey there guys, uh, this is Dan at Lion Tower Miniatures. I'm just doing uh, a sculpt for the Dwarf Blood Hunter for um, the Evil Anti-Heroes uh, month. And the first thing I just wanted to cover off, um, which I've been asked for a couple of times now, is <clears throat> how I do the chainmail. Um, I've tried loads of different ways using alphas, I've tried using um, insert meshes, nano meshes, uh, actually physically sculpting everything by hand. Um, I've not found a perfect way of doing it and the way I've settled on it's a little bit tricky um, but I've printed some of the skeletons I've done for this month and the results come out nice. Uh, there's a little bit of work involved so I just wanted to kind of cover it off with you and just show you what I'm doing. If you want to have a go yourself then um, fire it up and uh, you know show us your results. Um, but yeah, I'll just start here. So uh, what, what you can see at the moment is um, just a mannequin with the, the dwarf on it. Uh, I've sculpted a few bits of armour, um, stuck the boots on, got a position roughly in place. And <clears throat> I've just chucked in a, a cylinder. Um, the cylinder is going to be the, the former for the armour. So um, the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to use an insert mesh curve. So um, I've got these chainmail meshes here, which you can kind of see at the top of the screen. Um, when I draw these out onto the mesh, I'll just show you quickly, you'll get this kind of thing going on. Now that on its own is uh, of no use to anybody when you're sculpting a miniature. Um, the meshes, I can't actually remember where I got this one from, it would either be uh, badking.au uh, or cubebrush.co. Um, I get an awful lot of my brushes that I'm going to use from them. Uh, so, uh, actually, this one may also have come from the ZBrush, uh, the Pixelogic um, ZBrush Central libraries. <coughs> so, um, you can either make one yourself uh, using the Create a New Brush tool, which I'll I'll show you on another tutorial. I'm not going to cover that one here. Uh, for now. Head online, find a chainmail mesh brush that you like the look of. You can get them for free. I'm going to pay for them, um, but this is the one I've, uh, I've I've settled on, and it's kind of a, a long linear one that just repeats uh, a longer curve. You can get them where you just draw them out, and that's fine. But um, yeah, it's not what I'm going to be using here. So uh, quickly, then I'm just going to reshape and reform this uh, cylinder. Um, I'm going to click on this little gear up in the corner and I'm going to go to the taper tool and this will allow me to make a kind of a like a sleeve shape and I want to just taper the top in a little bit. So I'm going to grab this centre, uh, centre, this centre handle here. I'm just going to uh, pull it down and you'll see it starts pulling in. Uh, but the sleeve's got a kind of a funny shape about it now. It looks more like a, an upside down pot. So I've got this white handle instead, and I can bring it in, bring it out, take it in um, onto the other side and invert it. So I'm going to go with uh, that, I think. So it's just slightly on the inside, minimum it can actually go. And that's given me a, a nice taper to the end I wanted. I'm going to now just go back to the gear, put it back to Gizmo 3D. Gizmo 3D is the standard um, widget thing that they've created in ZBrush now for moving your tools around. If you're not using the latest version of ZBrush, I think it was ZBrush 2019, I think, or 2018, they introduced that in. If you're using an old version, R4, R5, R6, R7, or something like that, you won't have this um, Gizmo tool. Now, I'm not entirely sure how that one works then. Now, you can use the taper tools in the uh, deformation menu down here. You've got a taper, um, but you have to make sure you've got the cylinder in the correct orientation, um, and you've got the the correct X, Y, or Z activated to, to achieve the result you want. <coughs> it always takes a lot of tinkering, and the way I've just showed you is by far the, the better way of doing it. And I'm just going to rotate this round. I'm going to drop it up here onto the shoulder. Now, I haven't sculpted any of the musculature yet. Um, and that is basically because I tend not to do it like that. Um, unless the musculature is actually going to be on display, uh, I do tend to just bulk it out um, as I get to it. But that's 
more about experience on my part. I think if you're not experienced, you should sculpt the um, the musculature first, so you don't accidentally, you know, do a really skinny bicep or something that's hugely out of proportion, so it looks like it's got a ton of padding on it. Uh, so I'm just going to use the move tool, the move brush rather. I'm just going to deform the shoulder up a little bit. I want to create a little bit of a shoulder. Um, bicep is coming up this way to the front, so I'll bring the, the bicep part out. And I'm just going to bring the bottom in. So I don't want it to be a perfect cylinder, I want it to be roughly sleeve shaped. And bear in mind, obviously, it's, it's hanging vertically as well. Um, so you want to ever get the right orientation on it. At the moment, obviously, you can see it's pointing backwards, so I don't want that. I'm just going to bring it back down there, bring the back in. You want that the downwards direction to it. Okay, so I'm not going to change anything else on that just yet. I'm going to go and change to my chainmail brush. Now with this, the way these work is you start drawing a curve and it's going to, oh god, that's way too big. Um, so make sure you have a few tests and make sure you get it the right size. I reckon I'm going to have to go for about 110. Hmm, maybe 100. A little bit smaller than 90 maybe. 87, there you go. Yeah, 87. I'll settle with that. It's 87, uh, and you start pulling the brush out, and then you hold shift down, and you'll see it's gone to a full ring. So you're going to try and get it so it's roughly about the right size. Let it go, and you can see it's nowhere near the shape I need it to be. Uh, but that's fine. Uh, it tends to do that. Uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to go to uh, geometry. Uh, sorry, subtool menu and I'm just going to go down and go split masked and that just removes the chainmail mesh from the um, the kind of the former that I put on there now I can't delete the former I need to keep it there uh, but I need to position it so it actually sits underneath the, um, the chainmail <coughs> obviously when we 3d print this that tiny little wiry ring isn't going to work so what we need to do is we need to make sure there's at least a, either a millimetre's thickness to actually come through a 3D printer, which we're not going to get on chainmail, uh, it's just not going to look right, or that it's a solid mass. And again, if it's a solid mass, it's not chainmail, so uh, we need to go and strike a medium between the two. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, move the chainmail up. So we're going to centre the uh, gizmo. I'm just going to reposition it so that it's roughly on the edge of my roughly on the edge of my former. I'll rotate it around as I need to. Okay, next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to use the move the move tool with a really, really, really big brush size. And I'm just going to pull it to the surface roughly of the former. Now I'm not going to be over concerned about this. I'm also not going to try and take it all the way to the top there. I'm going to put something else over your shoulder so you're not going to see the top bit. Uh, let's bring this up here. That's a bit wrong of a shape anyway, so I'm not going to try and conform it too much. Now obviously I'm going to be stretching some of these rings out from a circular shape. They're going to end up slightly oval or whatever else. By the time they're on a miniature in chainmail, you aren't going to notice. So don't worry too much about the fine shapes. Um, and we can always delete some individual rings in a minute as well because obviously this is going to be a little bit um, what's the word a little bit battle damaged so I don't want it to be perfect anyway uh, let's just grab this top bit and just bring it up I'll just put it into solo mode then by the way just to make sure I can uh, 
see and where were they on its own. Uh, do you know what? I will actually drag this onto the shoulder, I think. Let's go over there. Let's just make it fit. Might as well. Now, if you're going to do this, make sure you do it evenly and distribute the distortion. You don't want all of the distortion pulled out from one end. Um, if you're going to distort it at all, try and do it as evenly as you can. Oh, that ring's bothering me there. That's coming out in a minute. Um, so, next thing to do is we're going to add some thickness to these rings because they are way too thin at the moment. And you'll see the mesh I've used as well, uh, insert mesh. Um, it leaves some holes in the mesh. It doesn't leave a perfect uniform mesh. And again, that's fine because the, si the size and the scale, you're not really going to see it. But it is going to be... Um, you know, it's going to come through, it's going to be uh, useful to make some damage with. So I'm going to call it done for now in terms of moving and stretching. I'm going to go to the deformations menu uh, under the, what's this, the tools, under tools, under deformations. And right down the bottom we've got an inflate one. So I'm just going to inflate until the rings are merging a little bit so I don't want to kind of completely make them into a single huge mass but where the where the rings cross over I'm hoping you can see my mouse cursor here where the rings cross here I want to try and bring it so they're all nice neat joints that come together and what you'll still have is the, the kind of the raised bits as the rings overlap and that's what's going to give us the chainmail effect plus the holes in the middle so I'm going to do that and I'm just going to go to auto groups and that's going to create a different polygroup for every single ring. So I can ind I can individually select a ring now um, and turn it on and turn it off. Before I touch any of that and start messing with that side of things, I'm going to take this sleeve that we've created, <coughs> the former. I'm going to divide it a couple of times, give it a little bit of a resolution, can the, uh, the lower resolution side of things, so I don't want to worry about that. I'm just going to kind of where it's poking through the surface. I'm well, I'm basically going to bring it so it is poking through the surface almost all the way across. Because um, what I don't want is any gaps, especially if you're going to be casting these models. You don't want any holes in the mesh. You don't want any kind of hollows. Hollows are your enemy when you're 3D printing. So what you'll end up with is all of these things having to be individually supported, which you just you seriously don't want. Um, or you're going to end up with masses and masses and masses of um, <coughs> of ridiculous um, thin pieces that are just going to fail. Um, so again, like I said, unless it's a millimetre thick at least, you're not going to be able to 3D print it. Okay, so we've got a big uh, solid sleeve now. I'm now going to take the clay build up tool and with the alt key depressed I'm just going to scrub over the surface and again I ain't fussed about making this too neat now um, all I want to do is I want to just expose the ring pattern and I don't worry I'm not worried about it too much I just want to kind of get a little bit of it visible um, so where the design is or the, the pink layer that's the uh, the former is sticking out through the surface. I'm just going to scrub that back a little bit. I'm not applying too much pressure because I don't want to kind of, you know, take it too far back. So I'm going to do this in a controlled manner. Going through. So now that I've got this, I think I need to bring it up in these areas here because it's not quite. I can see some shadows underneath the rings, and that's telling me there's going to be a bit too much depth there. So I've got to add a little bit, take a little bit away. It's a balancing act at this point. Okay, here's one of these areas I said you can see where there's like a little gap, so I'm just going to go in there with the alt button 
I'm just going to dig in a little bit and I'm going to accentuate the, uh, the hole basically. So now instead of just being uh, an anomaly in the mesh because it's not properly formed, it's a feature. So we've got a little actual feature piece of uh, hole in the armour. Same again here, I'm going to scrub this back and what I'll do is I'll just, I'll just gouge that into a, um, into a shape that's going to work for me. So take that right back to the, uh, the bone of the armature if you will. And I'm just going to dynamesh this in a bit anyway, so I'm not too fussed. No, sorry, I'm not too fussed about the uh, things sticking. Okay, so we we'll take a few more bits out. Again, shape the edges, and this gives it the uh, the image of being, um, or the impression rather, of being. Uh, a bit tattered around the edges, a bit battle damaged and battle worn. Uh, I can see this has got some <coughs> some weird artifacts type things going in the middle because I've used the uh, the sphere tool. So I'm just going to go back into my geometry menu. I'm just going to dynamesh this quickly. So add a little bit of resolution, slap a polish on, dynamesh it out. Okay. Um, I'm going to bring this back up into the rings here on the edge because. They all need a little bit of support and take it back in there. Infill. And then I'm going to switch to the ring menu itself, or the rings themselves. I'm going to take that one that's been annoying me. I'm going to go and take uh, a couple more. Let's have that one and that one. And that one and that one. So that's taking a little cluster out. And where that one was, I'll take a, another one out as well, just to add to that. Let's take here, I think. We've got one, two, three, and take them out because that will give me a little bit of a uh, interesting shape and diversity from the front. And I'm just going to go delete hidden. Now delete hit. I've, I've, you will notice I've got a few things around the outside of my screen which you won't have if you've got a standard setup. Um, if you've ever customised a brush, uh, there's ways of kind of positioning all of your tools around. What I would say is don't jump in there straight away and start customising everything, think, guessing what you're going to use. Take the things that you know you use after you've been using it for a little while and then put them all in. Uh, if you try and guess what you're going to have, you're going to end up putting a load of useless crap around the outside that's going to be of no use to you, it's just going to clutter up your screen. So <clears throat> take uh, just the useful things and put them around. So delete hidden actually lives in this modified topology menu under geometry. So you go in here, you've got delete hidden uh, and close holes is the other useful one that comes with that usually. So you hide something, delete it and then it leaves a big open gap in your mesh. You just click close holes and it just fills it in. Or you just dynamesh it and it does, it, uh, does the same anyway. Now at the moment these are still two separate meshes, so I'm just going to go back to my clay build up tool, invert it, and I'm just going to cut the holes uh, in the under mesh, the former. Uh, I'm just going to take them out. And then what I want to do is I want to add a, a little bit of thickness to it because obviously it's going to be um, it's going to be printed. But I'm just going to cut back into it a little bit so it's got the impression of at least being a sleeve rather than just a solid mass. And I'm not too fussed. Again, I don't, I don't really care if this is too even or anything like that. It's, you know, it's, it's going to be 32 millimeters tall when it's printed out. Um, or scale wise, actually, um, smaller than actually is a dwarf. Uh, right, so I've just re dynameshed again. If you're dynameshing, it's, it's good practice to dynamesh often. As soon as you start seeing like kind of pixelation going on with the, uh, the deformation of the tools. You start seeing pixels getting stretched or bits of the uh, mesh getting stretched. Uh, it's good practice to uh, re dyna mesh again just so you can uh, knock it back and make it work. Right, uh, and that I think will pretty much do it.
I'm just going to take some of these down a little bit because they're protruding at the top of the armour. I don't like that. So, and I think I'm going to put like a scarf or a mantle of some kind over the top. So, uh, you're not going to see this really. So we'll just take it down just a touch. Okay, and then we go to subtool menu again. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the chainmail tool and the former tool, so these two, select the chainmail, and I'm just going to go merge, merge down. Okay, <coughs> there you go, and it's all one tool. Now, when I'm happy with that, I can go to Dynamesh, whack up the resolution. Resolution on Dynamesh is dependent upon the size of the model relative to the scene. So if I take a resolution of 856 as selected here, uh, Dynamesh it and it all looks really blobby and pixelated, I'll have to increase the resolution a lot. That resolution is going to be the same for everything I use in this, um, in this scene. Uh, if you've got a very small model, you'll get away with a lower resolution, you'll still get a lot of pixels going on. Uh, if you've got a very large model on the screen, then um, yeah, it's going to be uh, a very high resolution. Ideally, you don't want to go too high resolution because it's just going to eat up more memory. It's going to add more, you know, mass to the uh, to the to the scene to the object. So try and keep things smaller if you can, um, and try and keep it as small as you need to go. So if you use eight five six and it works, maybe try five fifty or something like that, and then try again. Um, and if it's too, I mean, let's try it. Let's see how it looks. I put polish on as well because I like the way the the polish looks as a stylization option. Okay, so 856 in this case is no good. That's not sharp enough at all. So I'm going to go to uh, 1,200. There we go. 1208. And that I think is possible. So I'm just going to turn this off. And you can see everything's been merged together. The holes are holes. There's not an awful lot in the way of shadows and undercuts. Um, nothing I'm worried about anyway. I think all of these, by the time you've pretty printed that, that should all merge together. And I think the uh, the mesh is nicely defined all the way through. These are a little bit of an issue, so I'm just going to go and get the inflate brush. And I'll just come down here and um, let's just inflate the the line between the two. Oh, no, don't know that. That's not what I was after. Oh, you can see I've got a gap there that I've missed. So I'm going to go just between the gap there with the inflate brush. I'm just going to try and target a little bit of what's going on. I don't want to be messing with the ring itself too much. So if I end up doing that, it's uh, it's going to get undone. Oh, that's too that's too messy. That one is. So. So what I'll do, I'll just undo this a couple of times, go back to the thing, I want to make sure I've got the, uh, I was going to, right, so I've just hit, right, I should, no, I'll go back and explain what I've just done. <clears throat> okay, so I've got it, so I've got all the, uh, call it, the mesh visible, so this is after dyno meshing, so I'm just going to select the under layer by control, shift and click. So that selects all of the purple bits. So you can actually see here where I've got a few gaps underneath the mesh. So here it's not quite touching the rings because it's allowed it to kind of join up. Here I've got an area where it's uh, it's the same again, and here it is. So what I'm just going to do, I'm just going to take these. It's going to move. Oh, that's the flight brush them. I'm going to take the move brush and I'm just going to move these up a little bit. I'll take these bits and I'm going to move them out a little bit. These can come up. And only, I'm only talking a little tiny bit at the moment. Um, like I said, it is a little bit of a, an imprecise science. It's, you know, it's not too precise. Um, control and shift and click again. And that should... Uh, Let's mask it off first, just so I've got the option to move it back. Oh, no, that one, I've actually got a couple of uh, bits missing, so I'm not fussed about that one. 
here is the one I needed to address. So pull that up now. Um, everywhere else is looking good, so I'll do I'll just redynamish. Same resolution, control, drag away from the model, and now it's all a uniform mesh again. Uh, I'm going to go back to auto groups. So it's all now one thing, and that's it. Uh, sculpted passable chamber, and again, it may not be delicate. It's not to scale. It's not accurate necessarily um, and it will only work for small areas don't try and do an entire body covered in chainmail like this without breaking it up if you're going to do that I would do some like leather strap dividers between the, the, the shoulder for example uh, maybe one down the middle of the back or down the chest break it up make it a little bit more decorative if you like um, but yeah I mean he's, he's only going to have the one chainmail sleeve uh, I'm just going to carry on sculpting him and do what I need to do, and then um, yeah, I'll knock it on the head and I'll get this uh, this video up for you, so you can have a little look and see what you think. Okay, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, any more questions? Fire them into the comments below, uh, and I'll try and get back. And if I need to do another video to just address them, so be it. Cheers, guys. Take care.